Hello, brethren, and pray the Lord for yet another opportunity that God is giving us to share uh, from His Word. And uh, this day we are going to interact on God's, um, or rather, divine intervention or divine visitation, which is always timely. And I want to take this opportunity to say a word of prayer before we read from God's Word. And so we pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for the opportunity that you give us ever, ever to share in your word. And it is your word which is life, and it's your word which is light. And as your word says, it's the one that guides us through. And so, Lord, we take this opportunity again. As we interact with this word, bless us by the power of your Holy Spirit, who is a teacher and guide, to continue loving and knowing you more. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so I come, um, first and foremost, the very Reverend Eridad Milton Shisa, as you always know, from St. Andrew's Cathedral. And I thank God for this opportunity to share about this divine uh, visitation, which is always timely. And we thank God for every opportunity that he gives us as his children in his presence. And uh, the portion of scripture that we are going to dwell on as our base is Exodus chapter 3 and we are going to deliberate on verses 7 and 8 and we shall read exactly from there and the Bible says the word of God that then the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down, I have come down to deliver them out of the land of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. And so this is the word of the Lord that wants us to, to share at uh, this particular moment. And it's talking about the Lord God um, himself coming back to himself and saying, I have seen, I have heard, I have now come down. And so this portion of scripture, brethren, talks about the life of the children of Israel that were in Egypt where they had been for a duration, a long period of time. And you remember, you know the story, how the Israelites went down to Egypt and how um, the, 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 the 12 sons um, entered Egypt and how they settled there and um, how their brother Joseph had been there earlier than them and how he had become a very important person in Egypt and how he invited them eventually um in a series how they came down to egypt with their father jacob who was an old man and he gave them a portion of land where they stayed and they stayed comfortably until such a time when the bible as the bible says that there came a king in egypt who never knew joseph and this is when uh, these people are thrown into a moment of suffering into a period of slavery uh, where they groaned, where they suffered and they cried to God. And because they believed God who loved them, God who called their father, their grandfather Abraham, their grandfather Isaac, their father Jacob. And so they groaned over years. And so this portion of scripture that we read about um, in Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, God remembers them. God remembers the covenant that he had made with his friend, Abraham. And actually the Bible talks about Abraham as God's friend. And so when God remembered the covenant that he had made with Abraham, here he does, he remembers it. And then he says, yes, um, this is the moment when he calls his servant Moses. Uh, Moses, uh, one of the Israelites that were in Egypt, and you know the story, 
the story and I want to ask you if you have never um, thought deeply about it, you go back, read this uh, Exodus 1-2. You will see how the story flows, how Moses is, comes into picture. And now the picture that we are painting here is Moses who is being called by God to go and liberate the children of Israel that, had, that were suffering in Egypt um, immensely. And so it is God himself who says, I have seen the affliction uh, of my people who are in Egypt. And you know the story, I've already uh, alluded to it a little bit. But the story is clear in that book of Exodus. And so he says, I have seen the affliction. I have heard their cry. And I know their sufferings. And now I have come down. So there are three, four, four things that I want to make mention of it at this moment, brethren. And these four things is that actually God sees. Number one is God sees. And um, in some other language, Hebrew, uh, this is where you find the name El Roy. El Roy means God who sees me, and God sees. And so um, this very, very important um, uh, text um, points to us as well during our times. Of course, actually, we have our own uh, challenges. Of course, we have our own sufferings. Of course, we have our own um, you know, difficulties that we go through. That make us that make us groan, that make us cry, that make us you know look up and ask where is God in all this? Of course, I could have so many of this, and I know the Israelites at that time had challenges. They were they were being you know beaten, they were being you know um, thrown into this and that you know because of their taskmasters working so hard, and therefore they cried. And now because they cried, they looked back. Of course, it had taken time. But the Bible is telling us that God sees. And so I want to invite you to this God who sees, that God sees, because he says it himself, that I have seen, seeing, he sees. And by the way, <clears throat> the woman, uh, the woman called um, Hagar, Hagar in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 16, actually talks about the same God who does what? Who sees? And so um, Genesis chapter 16, verse 13, this woman, Hagar, and I want to invite you to this text also. You read Genesis chapter 16 and see um, the challenges that this woman went through, Hagar went through. And so the Bible says in verse 13, uh, Genesis 16, 13, that so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are a God of seeing. For she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Berahai Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. Now the most important thing here is what he says, I have seen the God who looks after me, the God who sees and so, brethren, I get excited when I read portions like this to encourage me during my difficult times, during my challenging moments, and even during our times, brethren. Of course, I've been um, in a very, very challenging time. We've gone through challenging times, but one of the most challenging times that we've had in our history is this COVID-19 era, the, the period that has, we are going through. It's a very, very hard one where we have had uh, places of worship locked down and they you know uh, churches of course actually we are we belong to church locked down and when we cannot congregate we cannot say that we are going to have congregational prayers and things like that but we thank god that uh, buildings are closed but you know our hearts our spiritual the, the the lines are not closed at all and so we can still plead with god like hagar is saying the god who sees me and so i want to just mention that you who are there, you who may be, you know, I mean, who may be finding life very, very difficult, the issue is God sees. Hallelujah to that. That God sees. And so just like this, God himself was saying that I have seen, God sees all the challenges, whatever problem that you are going through, whatever challenges that you are going through, whatever times that you may be finding, that you may be seeing, that you may be experiencing, that you may be going through, brother or my sister, my son, my daughter, my brother, my uncle, my father, my whoever, 
God sees and he cares about you. Now, point number two in this is that actually he himself mentions it and says that I have, I have, I have heard. So here, the point I'm bringing now is God hears. So are you making any prayer? God hears. Are you crying? God hears. Are you in a challenging moment? God does what? God hears. He actually listens. And this is the one who listens. Still, Hagar gives us a testimony to that. Because actually the one who looks after me is the one who hears my cry. And um, since he's the one who hears, well, First Peter chapter 3 verse 12, also Peter has something to tell us here in this, that the eyes of the Lord, First Peter 3 12, and the Bible says that for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. And so we're talking about God's ears open, hallelujah to that. That God's ears are open. So in whichever challenge, in whichever situation, well, even the good times, we need to hear God speak to us. We need to go to, to know that God is hearing us. When we are happy, when we are jubilating, God hears us. And so, mom, my brothers and sisters, God hears, God listens. And so I just want to encourage us, encourage myself and encourage you that God hears our prayer. And um the challenge comes maybe on the moment from I mean from the time you are crying to the time of your help. That's where the challenge comes, and I will in a, in a few moments I just say one little thing about it. But God hears, so He Himself says, "I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters." We have so much, so many many tasks. Men and women have many many tasks. Children. Very many, many tasks that make us cry, that make us, you know, uh, find life very, very, very uninteresting. But God hears. So I just encourage you that God hears your cries. God hears your challenging moments. Like he heard the cries of, uh, of Hagar. Like he heard the cries of the children of Israel. Like he heard the cries of men, other men and women. Hannah in the Bible. We are, we are going to mention, make mention about Hannah. Her cries. God hears. And so I sit here, I come here before you to say, God hears. And he says it himself. And he's faithful to his word. By the way, God is faithful to his word. And it is his word that we depend on as believers. And number three, God knows. When he knows, because he says it himself, I know their suffering. Now, my brother, my sister, know that God knows your situation. God knows the times they're going through. So since he knows, point number four, he comes down. He says, I come down. I have come down to deliver them. Now, the moment of deliverance comes when he comes down. And it's the point of coming down that actually that's our challenge. When does he come down? How does he come down? And so why he, does he come down? Because he knows. Because he has heard. Because he has seen. And when does he come down is the issue. So I just want to encourage you. That moment come. Times come. When he comes down. To, for our deliverance. And so my brothers and sisters, that he comes down. Yes, we read Isaiah chapter 64, that how, how I wish you rend the heaven and come down. And so we are always wishing, we're always praying, we're always yearning for his coming down. And so during this moment, uh, during our, you know, the corona times, in the COVID times, we say that God, may you come down and liberate us and save us. And so just say he came down for the Israelites during the time when he, they were in Egypt, the time when he came down during Hannah's time when she was crying for a baby, or Hagar's time when she was actually in a tribulation, in suffering in the desert. So we were also praying that may God come down, come down and deliver us. And he will deliver you, he will deliver me. And so in this Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1, like, you know, uh, we know that he can come down and may he come down. And so this moment, my brothers and sisters, may God who knows, who sees, who hears, who knows, who comes down, come down and set us free and save us from the challenges of life. And we know that he's faithful to his word. Just like the Bible, we read that actually his eyes are moving around looking for whoever whoever the righteous, and we saw that in First Peter. And somewhere else in the Bible talks about the eye of God watching and looking for 
the people that you can help. My brothers and sisters, may God bless you and watch over you. May God watch over us all that we shall always remain faithful to his word because he sees, he hears, he knows, and he comes down for our, liber for our deliverance. And so this day, may God bless us and watch over us. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you.